Hey guys. Hey Adam, how are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be back with Brand Innovators and, and getting to talk to you today um, about something very currently uh, near and dear to my heart. So this is going to be fun. Absolutely. I'm excited to speak to you. Uh, first, I guess, let's make do a round of introductions. I'm uh, Cody Arzari, EVP of Strategic Partnership with Influential. Uh, Adam, if you want to take, uh, take it from here. Yeah, I'm the head of partnerships and business development at Phase Clan. Amazing. So uh, obviously today's theme is the uh, metaverse. So it makes sense, uh, Adam, to bring you in to talk about Phase Clan. Um, for those of you who've been living under a rock or don't know anyone under 26, let's say, uh, Phase Clan is the biggest thing out uh, in entertainment, in gaming, in sports. Uh, we'll get into all the different uh, categories uh, that you cover. Um, but Adam, we'd love for you to kind of give a quick introduction as to what uh, Phase Class is, um, where it started, and, and kind of its place moving forward. Um, with a quick caveat that uh, I listened to a, a podcast from uh, Phase Temper this morning, um, and, and you know the craziest story is how you guys started and as a group of snipers online uh, on uh, I think it was Call of Duty, then uh, became vloggers, uh, you know, videoing and editing and remixing those those trick snipes. Um, then quickly turned into a lifestyle brand uh, before the explosion into uh, what you guys have become in transcending um, gaming itself. So um, I'll start there and Adam, I'll let you take it away. I mean, you, you pretty much nailed it, but you know, I can kind of start. In my research. I can go up a little, a little higher for everybody who maybe not, is not as familiar with the, the, the gaming ecosystem or FaZe Clan as a brand. Um, so FaZe Clan is the largest gaming and esports brand in the world, but we've really transcended um, as a really a, a youth culture brand. And so for us, you know, the company was founded, you know, almost 12 years ago um, by a group of friends that all met on Xbox Live, um, you know, playing uh, Halo and playing Call of Duty. Um, and they built a cult like following because what they were doing is they're recording themselves doing these trick shots and uploading them to YouTube. Um, which built just a massive, you know, fandom and following in that space. Um, they then, you know, moved into what at the time was the very first content creator house, which everybody is familiar with now. But at the time, um, you know, they really pioneered that, and and then that really transcended into the building of, of you know, the building of the foundational blocks of Phase Clan. Um, and so for us today. We, uh, we are a uh, cultural lifestyle brand. Um, so we have a consumer products div division where we're you know, doing um, apparel drops and collaborations you know, with the biggest artists in the world like Takashi Murakami. Um, we are creating content 24 seven across every major social destination that you can think of. Um, and then we have a talent collective of a hundred individuals who are the biggest influencers on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok. Um, we have uh, competitive professionals that compete in 10 of the, of the major gaming leagues across the world. Um, and, and then we have what I do, which is um, our brand partnerships division, um, where we um, have become really successful at walking brands into the space, helping them understand the ecosystem, how it's evolving, um, and how to really make a mark with our community and our fandom. You know, we now reach, you know, 381 million uh, followers in the world, um, which is why I, I mentioned in the beginning, we're, we're the biggest um, um, organization of our kind in the world. Uh, last year, we got the opportunity to grace the cover of Sports Illustrated. We were the very first gaming organization ever to do so. Um, and then uh, the year crescendoed with us announcing um, our SPAC and our plan to go public this year. So um it was quite the year so um but what we're talking about That's, now is probably more exciting to me than all of that absolutely and uh, hopefully you guys finally beat that uh, sports Illustri sports illustrated curse uh obviously and uh you know we'll get into the SPAC a little bit later but uh regarding talent i have a talent background i was a talent agent at wme for over a decade um i i obviously have have seen your, you know, phase one recruitment plan or recruitment, uh, uh, you know, rollout and campaign. Um, you partnered with MoonPay um, to, to obviously pay that, that new member, um, Nissan to give them a car. Uh, we'll get into some of your other brand partnerships, but coming from a t talent background, I'm curious, how do you vet someone who is phase um, and how do you uh, ensure that you have someone for everybody in your, you know, massive fan base and now soon to be a uh, fan base into the metaverse? Um, how, how do you select and how do you kind of pick and choose who makes it? 
Yeah, it's funny that the process of, of talent selection has evolved a ton over the last 10 years. I, mean, I think at one point in time, the guys would, you know, be like DMing folks within Instagram and on Twitter being like, hey, you want to join Pays? It was really that simple um, in the early days. Um, flash forward to today, you know, you're, you were uh, formerly at WME. Our talent vetting process has become very sophisticated. You know, it's we're putting our, our all of our new members through a, a program called the Academy, um, which is where we really help them, you know, with prepare them for what life is like as a phase member because your life changes. Um, and I'll get into what phase one is in a second, but overnight you, you, you your life changes, um, you become instantly more famous, your follower count grows. And so we, we put them through media tra training, we put them through cultural sensitivity training, um, you know, a big focus for us right now, um, as should it be for everyone, is uh, DE&I um, and, and making sure that, you know, we're really spotlighting um, every type of gamer in the world, regardless of their color, regardless of their gender. Um, and so that's like a huge mission for us right now is to, to really diversify our roster because, you know, gaming is historically um, an activity that's been dominated by white males. And, you know, we know that um, today that that's actually not reflective of, of the world around us and and that everybody is gaming um, you just look at the numbers so it, you know every type of background and person um, is gaming right now and so you know we want to make sure that we're reflecting what's happening in the world around us um, and so like what's very exciting we're literally on twitch live right now um, streaming this but um, last week we announced uh, phase one which is kind of like our version of American Idol. It's our global talent search for the next member of FaZe Clan. And so last time we did this, um, you know, we received over 200,000 applications, which is like more than what most like colleges get, which is just insane. Um, and so what we're going to be doing over the next four months um, is we're going to be accepting all those applications, putting them through a, 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 a rigorous vetting process. Um, what's on Twitch right now, if you go to Twitch, um, um, our phase clan channel. Um, we're literally doing a, a show called road to phase one over the next several weeks, um, where we're going to announce the top 100, then we're going to get it down to the top 20. Those top 20 are going to move into a house. It's going to be kind of squid game style where they're going to be doing challenges, um, creating content. And then, you know, we're going to whittle it down to, to announcing the winner of phase one, um, in May. So, it's, it's an incredible program. We're really excited to be doing it. And it's, it's just always fun to expand the family of talent. That's uh, absolutely fascinating. And I'm sorry, I'm getting my application in a little bit late because I'm definitely putting myself in for that. But um, hey, Cody, you got, uh, but no. you, got, you got time, man. You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay, good. I'll be in that house very soon. Um, well, that's amazing. And I guess, you know, um, you know, diversity is the focus I know uh, at Influential. And thankfully, finally, the focus of, of you know, Fortune 500 brands um, and talent alike. Um, you know, we'd love to, to talk about your brand partnership with McDonald's. Um, and it, I believe it's called Spotlight, um, to literally give spotlight on um, creators of, and streamers of color. Um, and, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about that campaign and how it blends itself into phase one? And also, obviously, uh, you know, the need to diversify the team. Yeah, no, I mean, that that was the highlight of our year probably from a content standpoint but you know with one of our, our partners and mcdonald's is as good as it gets in terms of partnership and you know they really challenged us to 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 really do something impactful and innovative and do something that's never been done before and the obvious choice for us was to do spotlight which is a series where um we were highlighting uh you know up and coming uh streamers of color um, and, and streamers that maybe hadn't had the opportunity to, to get showcased on a major platform. So, um, so FaZe Swag, who is um, the most famous black streamer in the world, um, basically did a, a series where you know, we identified these, these emerging talent and we gave them opportunity for them to just talk about their life and, and what gaming means to them and, and their day to day. And they had the opportunity to ask questions of our talent who are, are now established and, and fairly famous and have a lot of notori notoriety. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue those relationships with those, those members of the community. And, you know, our hope one day, my hope is that those, those folks get the opportunity to join FaZe and join other gaming organizations because um, they deserve the opportunity. So, you know, that program has gotten a lot of press and, you know, um, obviously we think just the world of it. So happy to do it. 
I'm glad we spoke about the highlight uh, of 2021 um, because there are numerous, and I'm, I can go down a laundry list. Um, you guys are, you know, named the number nine best marketer of the year um, in that age. Um, you signed Bronny James, uh, NFL Kyler Murray, Juju Smith-Schuster. I think it was actually a couple years ago. Uh, ben Simmons from the NBA. Um, deals with Xbox, Nissan, Corona, G Fuel, DC Comics. Um, congratulations, I guess, to start. Um, but secondly, um, how do you and your team manage, uh, you know, to create create such consistently authentic but uh, equally meaningful partnerships? Um, and how do you now take these partnerships that started maybe in a lifestyle or in the gaming world, and how does that transcend into the metaverse moving forward? Yeah, I think for us, like, you know, I think a lot of people talk about authenticity. For us, it's not just a thing we strive to do. We have to. Otherwise, our fan base, they won't accept, you know, a brand that comes in because, not only are we announcing a partnership with that brand, but we're going to be producing series and original content and things that we want to, at the end of the day, entertain them and inspire them. And, you know, we have to make sure that the partners we're selecting, you know, really um, th their goals and their objectives, you know, are not just to sort of reach a youth culture audience, um, but it has to extend well beyond that, it has to add value to their lives and, and really kind of speak to them. And so, when I said earlier, like we've gotten, I think we excel at walking brands into the gaming space um, because we've we've taken our, our licks along the way and made mistakes and learned from them. And, you know, and I think a lot of those partnerships you just announced, it's it's um, they all have one thing in common and, and it's and it's trusting that, you know, the authenticity um, and the cultural impact of of the partnership, you know, really has to be there for it to, to work and for everybody to be really happy. And, and I'm sure you've got hundreds of uh, brand marketers who w will be wanting to or, you know, have wanted to work with Faze in the past on the call. So what are what is a mistake? And that's, that's a, you know, a good, a good uh, kind of segue. What's a mistake that you guys have made that it wasn't on brand for Faze? It was something that you tried. It was something that was new. And obviously the metaverse, um, you know, kind of to go back to the conversation, everything is new these days. Um, it's a trial and error and people are going to fall on their face sometimes. But what is something that you guys said, this was a swing and a miss and we learned and we benefited from that, if, if you can. Yeah, there's a couple things. Like, first off, we're not in the business of like selling to our fan base. Like that's not really what we could or should do. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to have a conversation with them. Um, and so anytime a brand has a, like, we get a brief and it's like, this is the message. We've, it's, it's too late. Like we've already failed because it shouldn't start with, this is the message. The first question should be, what should our message be? Like, what, how, what do we want to open up here and have a dialogue? I think going back to McDonald's, like they're That's great fun. at that. They're very good at understanding like, Hey, we're not trying to push products here. What we want to do is we want to create experiences in the form of content in the form of live programming, in the form of like physical products that the fan base really loves. And it, and it, and it you know, really creates that kind of authenticity. Um, it, it creates an affinity for the brand and, and really drives that loyalty. I think that's, that's how we start. So I think the other thing is that sometimes um, we get looked at as like a media vehicle to, to push content and that's not it either. Um, that's, that's, you know, there's many places to go to, to, you know, do paid media. And, you know, if we started to do that, we would, we would lose our fan base. And that's kind of what made us who we are. So we always try to remember that. That makes sense. Um, and, you know, speaking of the fan base, um, it, it, it's, what, what are the age demos that you cover? It's got to be from, you know, eight to 58 or something in between. Yeah. I mean, like it, it extends like very young and you'd be surprised at like how many um, you know, uh, older skewing uh, parts of, of the demographic are, are like gaming and, and watching gaming and, and consuming that content on a day-to-day -day basis. Our core is really, you know, 13 to 34, even really like 13 to 24, really that Gen Z audience is, is really where we hang our hat and where a lot of our scale comes from. But um, yeah, that's, that's kind of like how the audience makeup looks. That makes sense. And so a partnership um, that I did mention earlier, one with DraftKings. Um, DraftKings became the official sports betting, iGaming, a daily fantasy and free-to-play uh, partner of, uh, of Base Clan. Um, obviously covering a, you know, a younger age demo, how are you guys able to kind of market that and, and, and create content for 
your older fans, but obviously knowing that, you know, a, a, a large chunk of your fan base won't be able to uh, play or can play for free. Yeah. So like with DraftKings, what's really awesome about them is that it's so much more than, than sports betting. It's, it's, they're a, I mean, they're in their own right. They've become an, an incredible powerhouse in terms of, of a life of a lifestyle brand. And a lot of the moves they're making, you know, we're talking about metaverse today. Um, they're, they're very involved in that space um, among other things. And so, you know, for us and them, it's, it's really all about, um, you know, brand building. Um, it's about selecting the right talent that does have a fall, <laughs> a strong following of, of, uh, sure, sure. of folks that are, are of age and can use their products. Um, and, and we're not looking at this as like a 20, you know, 21, 2022 deal. We look at this as a, how is this going to evolve over 10 years? Because our audience is aging up, you know, a lot, our phase started 12 years ago and those fans are now, they're not 15 anymore. They're approaching their thirties. And yeah. so, you know, for us, we look at DraftKings as a long-term strategic partner. Um, and, you know, really sports is a huge element of what we do now. We have athletes that are official phase members and Kyler Murray and LeBron James Jr. Um, and so uh, DraftKings is really um, poised to, to, to help us expand in that area in the future. And I, I asked a question actually to DJ Ski uh, a couple panels ago, but what do, where do you see uh, live sports in the metaverse or how do you see that experience changing, um, bringing more people to the experience? How do people, uh, you know, experiencing it with a headset or even through a phone, how can they recreate um, that sort of reality and, and where does uh, phase it in, uh, you know, as, as the brand to kind of bring it to you and bring it to the forefront? Yeah, I mean, when we talk about live sports through through our lens, like traditional sports, um, sure, like we play there and it's a big part of what we do. But, you know, it, when it comes to esports, like absolutely. I think, um, you know, on the previous panel, I overheard, you know, mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality. Like, I think, you know, Meta and Oculus are doing, they've done incredible work in terms of pioneering that space. Um, it's kind of crazy that Oculus, like the headsets, have been around for almost a decade. Like that's that. That's just I, 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 me. I've got one in my closet that I tried to, you know, get into yeah. the new systems, and I think it's just a few uh, series is too old. But but yeah, it's been around for a while now. Yeah, and like you know, I was listening to um, an interview between Zuckerberg and and Gary V, and it, it was probably the best Zuckerberg interview I think I've ever seen. Like he, you know, he was just so elated to talk about the metaverse and like the and to make a move like that and to rebrand i mean that is like the monumental swing of epic proportions to do, i mean that's a, what a risk but it's the right one um because you know this is what we're here to talk about today and i think you know virtual reality i think a huge compelling selling point of it is how it's going to connect you to the sports environment i think it's going to just create such a compelling viewing experience and I think it's going to allow access closer and closer to, to athletes um, of all sports, you know, whether it be esports or traditional sports. So I think um, it's just going to make, you know, a really compelling, um, yeah, experience for, for all of us in the future. And the headset technology is getting so sophisticated um, as it moves wireless and it becomes like more kind of streamlined and less clunky. I think it's going to be something that people are going to want to use more and more. So the price point has to stay low. Um, you know, the, the, the case studies and, and obviously the experiences uh, will only be getting more people to, uh, to, to buy it and obviously get involved as well. Um, so in, in, in building, you know, the audience, obviously, uh, whether it be esports, live sports or otherwise, um, you guys just uh, entered an SPAC with a $1 billion valuation. What does that valuation, what does that money and how does that help you guys uh, move forward into the metaverse, into this new world? Cool. I'm just, I'm just checking the participants to see if our lawyers are PR. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I'll share as much as I can. So obviously in an event like this, like it opens up a world of possibility, you know, um, I think gaming is so ubiquitous now and it's, and it's not this thing in its own sandbox. It's, it's a mainstream activity. And so for us, um, it, we, we really have the chance to do a lot, you know, with our, you know, new position. And I think, you know, we're exploring all types of moves. Um, I can't get into them, but, you know, really, I think 
particular with the metaverse, um, you know, it's definitely something we're very interested in. It, what is public is our partnership with MoonPay. Um, and, you know, that's only a facet of the Web3 space, but, you know, that, that partnership is really designed for us to educate our audience on the tenets of, you know, um, crypto investing in, it, in the NFT space and the opportunity that's there and, and, and making sure it happens in a safe way because we're in inning one here like we're so early days and I, I think you know we want to make sure that you know where we lead our fans and our audience it's 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 done safely and it's done in a way that you know truly like you know inspires them and helps them um, and I think MoonPay is an incredible partner for us in that so you know we have a lot of really fun exciting programming that we're going to launch they're they're the title sponsor of, of Unfazed we're giving away a million dollars in cryptocurrency to the winner um, which I mean, it's someone's life is going to change in four months. So, I mean, it's, it's great. You should really apply. <laughs> <laughs> you should really apply. Um, let me make sure good. Ryan's not on here. Hold on one second. No, okay. yeah. um, no, that, that's, that, that makes a ton of sense. And, and, and obviously, uh, I know you have to be uh, obviously tight lipped about it, but, uh, you know, that, that trailer, that sizzle where they announced it, you know, it's super exciting. You can, you can tell the buzz, uh, you know, from internally, from the top down that the whole company, um, you know, couldn't be more excited and, and it couldn't be, uh, you know, uh, more excited to see where that takes you guys next. Um, I know we have to save some time for questions. I'm not sure if there's any yet. Um, okay. Um, but I've got, I, I'm, I'm on a more, you know, personal level, um, you know, you've had a tremendous 2021, uh, as I've mentioned several times prior. What are you looking forward to this year? What prof professionally, personally, trips, travel, um, uh, phase or otherwise, metaverse or otherwise? I mean, I'll stick on metaverse because that truly is what I'm most excited about. I'm a, I'm a Web3 cool. investor on a personal level. You know, I just think we just saw the, the one of the, first off, one of the biggest tech deals in the history of the world um, with, with Microsoft and Activision. Activision and sure. that deal is rooted in the metaverse. Um, and that is a huge part of it. Activision is so well positioned. Gaming is so well positioned for the metaverse. Um, I mean, you could argue that Fortnite is probably the, the largest standing metaverse maybe right now um, mm -hmm. that exists today. And gaming is going to support this ecosystem in, in such an epic way. And so I'm really excited to see that develop. I really love to see the the brand deals that are happening in this space. Um, Nike buying Artifact, who is a partner of ours. Um, you know, we did mm -hmm. something with them at Art Basel. Um, that was unbelievably exciting to see. What Adidas did with Board Ape Yacht Club was just incredible. Um, and this is not new. You know, it's like this has been around for. You know, Niantic pioneered this with Pokemon Go, um, but. Yep. What I'm very excited to see is, you know, specifically, you know, I'm, I'm very into NFTs and I think those projects, you know, CryptoPunks, Board 8, Yacht Club, they're really going to evolve and they're going to become really utility based. And I think a lot of the direction that it's going in is, is it's going into NFT projects that have gaming utility. Um, so you hmm. buy an NFT that can be utilized in the game environment. You buy other NFTs that you can layer onto your avatar. Um, which is what Artifact and, and CloneX, um, if anyone knows right. about that project, that's what it's all about. So I think, um, you know, Metaverse or, you know, I, I just generally refer to it as, as Web3, which is kind of the summation of Metaverse, um, you know, crypto, NFT technology, um, digital goods. For us, that's very exciting space. Um, you know, we did a, a digital good with FIFA. Um, kind of a test uh, a couple of years ago. Um, we had over a million people down, download our skin within FIFA and it was played in over 75 million matches. Um, we didn't know how it was going to do, but it just, that, that right. was two years ago. So it gives you the, it just gives you a, you know, and shout out to, to, to Kevin Shrunk, wherever he is right now. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just a huge like indicator of, of there's so much more to go and I'm just excited to see what happens. Is there now, I know you guys have, you know, teams in Call of Duty, uh, you know, obviously teams that are excelling in some of the other sports. What is, if Fortnite is the leader now, what's the next man up? What's, what's the next uh, either co competition or, or game that, 
you guys are looking to build a team around or you know uh, is where the metaverse is, is going? Well, League of Legends is the biggest game in the world globally. Um, you know, Call of Duty is, is right up there. Um, you know, uh, Fortnite, of course, um, and, and others. Uh, we just entered uh, Halo's very first competitive league um, in December. Oh, wow. um, so that is something we're super excited about. We love our partners over at Microsoft and um, we are going to really build ar around that. But, you know, for us, it's, it, it's always back to the fans. It's like, where do they want to see us go next? And so, you know, our social team does a tremendous job of staying close to the community and, and having a beat on where they want to see us go. And so, you know, they, they typically are our North star for, for those types of decisions. So, you know, we'll, we'll definitely enter more leagues for sure. Without question. Amazing. Amazing. And more movies. And I know, uh, was it rug was in a movie, a horror movie last year? He was uh phase rug. Right. Um, he's like arguably our, our biggest star and um, yeah, our, our content strategy, expanding our IP, it's it's all in the roadmap so there's going to be some really fun things coming later this year um that i can't announce just i wish i could right now but um there's some <laughs> really great stuff coming for sure well we'll set the follow-up uh later this year in metaverse talk number two um yeah i i don't know if you're seeing any questions uh sydney uh, i don't know if you want to send on through i just want to make sure i'm not forgetting anybody no questions here from my end, but I could definitely put some in the chat for sure. Yeah, I guess all I'll say in parting, since we have like a couple minutes, is I think a lot of people question the metaverse and it's, is it here to stay? Is its validity? And like, again, we just saw the biggest tech deal in US history. Um, and that was like a major component of it. And so I have a lot of friends uh, say that, well, where do I start? Like, this is so daunting. Like, how do I get into this space? And you know, I always give the advice of just dive in, go on YouTube, go on Instagram. Twitter is an incredible resource. Follow um, Web3 influencers on Twitter. Um, join Discords. Definitely join dis Discords. Like that's a huge piece of advice. So much information is happening there right now. And so if you're not familiar with Discord, get on it. It seems like scary at first, but you'll get the hang of it really fast. And like I said, this is early days, like Web1 dot com bubble web two social mobile like this is happening and um i just i want to see all my friends kind of get in on this and, and have the opportunity to to win so um we all gonna make it if you know what that means yeah <laughs> then you what, know what, what, what i was gonna say is uh I, I i jumped into coinbase uh a couple a couple weeks ago at the absolute wrong time. So uh, I, what I would say is you're exactly right. You have to do it and there'll be highs and lows, uh, but obviously this is the future. Um, and thank you for, you know, leading the way and, and, and getting people started uh, in joining. For sure. Um, Cody, thanks for having me, man. This was awesome. Um, great, to, great to talk to you.